Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Linwood's 10th Annual Poetry Out Loud High School Competition. As Linwood's band director, I am honored that Mrs. Witcher and Mrs. Krill asked me to MC the evening. The winner of tonight's recitation contest will go up against other New Hampshire high school winners at the regional competition held here at Jean's Playhouse on February 21st at 7 p.m. The top two scores from that competition will then go on to the state competition at the State House on March 15th. Poetry Out Loud is a national recitation competition endorsed by the National Endowment for the Arts and the Poetry Foundation. High school students across the country are memorizing and reciting poems from a list of 400 different choices. A winner from each state will travel to Washington, D.C. in April to compete in the national title. Tonight, each, recit each recitation will be judged in six categories. Physical presence, voice, dramatization, level of difficulty, evidence of understanding, and the overall performance. I'd like to introduce this evening's performance judges. We have Maureen and Jay Palomino, Dan Adams, Jamie Dubuy, Amber Wright, Chad Steen, Aaron Bell, Rebecca Steves, and then we have Dennis Strappo as our tabulator, Mr. Baker is back as our accuracy judge, and Jen Witcher is our prompter. And thank you also to the North Country Center for the Arts and Jean's Playhouse for letting us be here this evening, which is great. We also extend our thanks to the Linwood Cooperative School District, the administration for supporting this national program, and the New Hampshire State Council for the Arts and the High School Board, uh, and the High School Band. <laughs> and now I'm going to recognize our classroom winners from the high school, and this will be their competition order for round one. We have Jack Chase, Caitlin Clark, Zach Baumgartner, Jillian Clark, Justin Rommel, Jade Fitzgerald, Sarah Cronin, Grace Petrin, Maddie Chase, and Colin Chow. <laughs> After round one, we will have a short break, um, and no refreshments this evening, but a short break. Uh, and then round two will feature our top five scorers from the round. And after that, the winner and the alternate will be announced at the conclusion of that part two. Uh, then uh, we'll have some certificates for all of the participants uh, who, were, who did their poem this evening. And then we'll be over. One final thing, the judge's decision is final. All right, so those of you who are the, our winner and our alternate will be back here February 21st. And uh, now we're going to have some pregame here with uh, some uh, elementary students who are going to get in their poems and recite uh, things that they've been working on. We have fifth graders, uh, fifth grader, fourth graders, and third graders. So come on up. First, we have Sarah Jolly. She was counting on her teacher. 
should have written a poem, and I blew it. So she had to come up with plan B really fast. So thank you, Sarah, for being understanding. I appreciate it. You know, I was just going to say I'm feeling a little old here, not just with the gray, but with a music stand and paper and looking at it. And then she's up here like, oh, I just got this thing. Uh, so I'm going to do that now. You see I'm dropping paper and stuff. I'm going get to get in the no here. All right. Well, I'm still going to use paper and these. Uh, all right, next, from grade four, Allie Notice. Treasures and secrets are only known to you. Do you even have a clue that two gem like you are so very few? You're my best friend for life, you know. I may not really show, but you're special. I chose this poem because I want people to feel something. And next, also from fourth grade, we have Maha Obama. Small as a peanut, big as a giant, we're all the same size when we turn off the light. Rich as a sultan, poor as a mite, we all work the same when we turn off the light. Red, black, orange, yellow, and white, we all look the same when we turn off the light. So maybe a way to make everything right is for God to reach out and just turn off the light. I chose this poem because everybody's different, but when you turn off the light, nobody's different. <laughs> showed us all up. She doesn't have paper at all. Yeah. Not a bit. Uh, and next up, also grade four, Maisie Anderson. Daddy forgets my name. By Bruce Lansky. My daddy calls me Sweetie Pie. He calls me Honey Bun. He also calls me Poopsie, which I think is kind of funny. My daddy calls me Sugar... Yeah, sure. Trigger Plum and also Sleepy Head. My silly dad forgets my name when he tucks me into bed. I chose this poem because I think it is funny. All right, we're on to some third graders now. We have a group here, a trio. Hazel Wilson, Kiara Blake, and Campbell Barnaby. Third grade.
before they had to put up with him. Who's to say? Yeah, well that's that that's great. Okay, thanks for sticking in there. It's pretty scary up here, isn't it? You get going and then all of a sudden you feel like your whole body's going boom, 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 boom. There you go. Well, you'll be great. All right, now, hang on there. Because I got two names here.
that's no, that's totally fine. It's just it's good for the audience. You don't want to hear the name of their poem or the author twice. So they're supposed to announce it. So I'm not going to tell you. We're going with them. Because why would you want to hear it twice? Especially, well, that was the easiest name. Well, that was the hardest name to say. Sometimes I must admit that I'd be like, I don't want to say that name. Um, but these ones are pretty easy. I was just looking at them. Thought that was all right. All right. Well, here we are, still in ninth grade, and we're going to have Caitlin Clark, and she's doing the poem. She'll tell you what it is. Washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. 
and think, this heart, all evil shed away. A pulse in the eternal mind, no less, gives summer back the thoughts by end of giving. For sights and sounds, dreams, happy as her day, and laughter, learnt of friends, and hearts at peace under an English heaven. Thank you. later on. But right now, we have Jillian Clark.
checking in. All right. Your program said Justin Rommel, but no Justin oh. So we will be going to grade 11 uh, with Jay Fitzgerald.
I was trying to hear the drums in that one. I guess I didn't realize I was the only one there until I started playing. Uh, 12th grade still. Grace Petra. Stretch here with Maddie Chase. Propositions by Stephen Dunn. Anyone who begins a sentence with, in all honesty, is about to tell a lie. Anyone who says, this is how I feel had better love form more than disclosure. Same for anyone who thinks he thinks well because he had a thought. If you say, 
you're ugly, to an ugly person, no credit for honesty, which must always be a discovery, an act that qualifies as an achievement. If you persist, you're just a cruel bastard, a pig without a mirror, somebody who hasn't examined himself enough. A hesitation hints at an attempt to be honest, suggests a difficulty is present. A good sentence needs a clause or two. Interruptions set off by commas, evidence of a slowing down, a rethinking. Before I asked my wife to marry me, I told her I'd never fully be honest. No one, she said, had ever said that to her. I was trying to be radically honest, I said, but in fact, had another motive. A claim without a but in it is at best only half true. In all honesty, I was asking in advance to be forgiven. Scooby-Doo playing, it's time to be back in your seats. About 10 minutes. Thank you. Scooby-Doo. 
Thank you. The crowd ignored her, or they muttered, hey, excuse me, as they passed her, when our train had stopped at Rector. The specter crowed, excuse me, swiftly turned and ran back up the corridor. Then, then stopped for me, we dove under the river. She took my head between her fingers, squeezing till the birds began to stir. Then from my eye, from out my eyes and ears, a flock came forth. I couldn't think or hear or breathe or see. So silently, I thanked her. Such things were common after disaster.
the stretch here, 10th grade, Jillian Clark. of the evening. fitting number called Final Countdown. <laughs>
Let's hear it for the band here, the Skeleton Band tonight. I always tell them to prepare, prepare, prepare. Uh, make sure you know everything because sometimes you got to do more than you thought. So uh, I, I really want to hand it to these guys um, putting out there tonight, changing their schedules this week and then making this happen. So thank you, thank you, thank you for me. Uh, are we ready? Yeah? Okay, I'll get the abacus. We'll get going. Oh, we'll do that? All right, good. We're going to do some certificates now. Yeah, can we have all the participants come up on the stage? Elementary two, come on up.
we had like an awesome panel of judges. If the judges could just give a little wave, a little wave. <laughs> we have K through 12 representation on our judging panel this year, which is, and then we also have community members, which makes <coughs> Poetry Allowed one of our favorite events of the year. And you watch these guys up here from third grade to 12th grade, and what I love most is even when they forget a line, they don't like run screaming like out into the wilderness, which is probably what I would have done in ninth grade had that been me standing up here. And so the fortitude and the bravery and the courage that you all display, it doesn't matter to me who came in first or second or 12th or 14th. You are all awesome tonight, so thank you. Runner-up and a winner, all who need, or both, who need to memorize three poems for the regional competition, which is at the end of February. So get ready to pick one more poem, Jillian, as our runner-up.